Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Yemi from Myanmar. So I'm going to discuss about the diabetes and CKT, incidence, complexity, and management overview. There's a, in 2019 IDF regions, we can see here that in the, the upmost uh, area, the wall prevalence of the diabetes is 8.3. In number, is uh, nearly 463 million people were suffering from diabetes. But among these, uh, wall number two and three, you can see here that it's the uh, Western Pacific area, the total number of 162 million people were suffering from diabetes. The prevalence rate is 11.4. And in Southeast Asia, including our Myanmar, has suffering from 87 million people are, are suffering from this diabetes and prevalence rate is 11.3. And also, also in the obesity become globalized, the metabolic syndrome is becoming a global epidemic as well. It is estimated that nearly 37% of Asian people, Asian population, are suffering from metabolic syndrome. Here is some data for, from the Asia in different ways of the overweight person, nearly 20 to 30 percent of the overweight person are occupied in the, our population. This is a 2014 Myanmar data. Here you can hear, see also that the uh, components of the high blood sugar, rich blood pressure, overweight and rich cholesterol is participate at least that one third of the population, you can see here that, that um, both male and female population is so a one third. And in, in these uh, components of the metabolic syndrome, diabetes is a worsen, you see, both diabetes and pre-diabetic condition, if we are not controlled very well in this condition, they will turn out to be the many complications, especially the chronic kidney disease. So this is a 50% of the worldwide is a kidney failure is due to the diabetes. And this is a kidney failure in type 1 diabetes is a overt nephropathy revert to the kidney failure within 10 years. And after 10 years, that rise up to the 75% of the cases. In type 2 diabetes, Melissa also, although there is a slow progression, 20% of reach the kidney failure also. That's why in Myanmar also the incidence trend yearly increased from the 4,000 to the 7,000 uh, patient was uh, incidence in a chronic kidney disease in hospital data. So as we all know that chronic kidney disease is defined as a, either kidney damage or GFR less than 60 mL per minute for three months. The kidney damage defined as a, any pathologic abnormalities uh, including the urine test, blood tests, and imaging studies. So the GFR will be divided into uh, five categories. You can see this is a category one, it's a stage one kidney damage with the normal GFR. This is a hyperfiltrated phase and end up with the, this is a kidney failure, GFR less than 15. In between, I also asked a later question in my MCQ. This is a uh, GFR 30 to 60 is uh, uh, entitled with a uh, stage 3 chronic kidney disease. Even in the COVID era, uh, this is a data from 23rd March to the 17th May 2020. The total number of positive cases is 187, and there's uh, still active at that time is uh, 80 cases. Among these, there's uh, associated with uh, some and renal dialysis cases and also chronic renal failure cases and even renal transplant cases are also infected in that category. And in the case of the dead case, six dead cases, more than 50%, 50 percent of the cases are correlated with uh, comorbid with uh, diabetes and chronic renal disease. So this is a persistent albuminuria, more than 300 milligrams per day with the diabetes, we call it a diabetic kidney disease but it's usually in the presence of the retinopathy and also associated with the hypertension and progressive decline in the renal function. Here you can see the type one trend of the, this uh, diabetic kidney disease. From the beginning of the diagnosis of type one diabetes, within 20 years it started uh, without, uh, 
proper treatment, it can change it from the normal albuminuria to the macro albuminuria within 20 years. But the, the changes of the, this uh, kidney function will be accelerated, uh, de decreased in the, within five years, turn out to be azodemia and it's ended with the totally kidney failure within one year. In type 2 diabetes, my dear, natural history is the same, but progress is less predictable because of the more than 50% of cases that died of the coronary artery disease rather than the heart failure. Just review your memory and uh, remind your memory that the pathology of diabetic glomerulosclerosis mainly cause of the thickening of the basement membrane. This is a hallmark of the diabetic nephropathy. We call it the chemical worsening lesion. That will be asked later in my question. So this is a pattern pneumonia of diabetic nephropathy. This is a specific lesion. This is a nodular glomerulosclerosis. In addition to that, there's also the diffuse glomerulosclerosis and the diabetic tubulopathy also. So these are the, may play an important role in the development of the progression of the kidney disease in diabetes. Proteinuria induced extraction of the various pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic markers by the proximal tubular epithelial cells. So this pathway can lead to progression of the interstitial inflammation and fibrosis. Here you can compare the so diabetic glomerulopathy and diabetic glomerulus. In this glomerulopathy, you can see here that uh, this uh, lumen is narrow and the basal memory is thickening and there's a uh, well, proliferation of messengers are also noted in that. That's why there's a flow, slow blood flow and that leading to the more worsening of the focal and diffuse glomerulosclerosis and tubulopathy. Among the this, uh, many risk factors for the diabetic kidney disease, we can revert, uh, we can pro uh, retard the re progression of the disease by controlling the hypertension, hyperglycemia, uh, to revert the microalbuminuria, stop the secret smoking, and treat the hyperdyslipidemia. But we also emphasize on the kidney because of the this uh, diabetic kidney disease, but. Sometimes, when diabetes duration is less than five years without retinopathy, we should have highly emphasized that this, is there any gross elevated lipid fiber? Is there any urinary sediment, hematuria, pyuria, or is there any history or clinical feature of primary renal disease preceding the onset of diabetes? So, uh, on that situation, we have to, in suspect of the uh, non-diabetic kidney disease, we have to confirm the proteinuria and retinopathy is by dilated fundus funduscopy. But in that case, it's not enough. If they are not uh, seeing the funduscopy, then we confirm with the forensic funduscopic angiogram is needed to exclude the retinopathy in total. So this is also asked in my question. So we need to confirm with the FFA, pre forensic fundoscopic angiogram. After excluding that, uh, we assume that, oh, this is not because of the diabetes itself, if retinopathy is absent in this patient. So we review on that as a by ultrasound, review other causes like uh, hydronephrosis or tumor or inferior vena cava obstruction, or we can and, uh, assess the kidney size is there any enlarged or is there any contracted kidney? And we can exclude that as a, is it chronic glomerulosclerosis or chronic pyelonephritis or do they need to make a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis of the underlying causes? The treatment goal of the diabetic kidney disease is mainly to prevent or to retard the progression of the diabetic nephropathy leading to the kidney failure. Here is a five principle to control or to retard the progression of the diabetic kidney disease by tight glycemic control, by optimal blood pressure control with the AC and ERB, and lipid management and the protein restriction. Here, from the beginning of the diabetes without nephropathy up to the kidney failure, every step we can prevent it by using the tight glycemic control blood pressure control and the uh, using of the AC and ERB. Here is a many evidence, there's a strong evidence 
uh, DCCD trial and UKPDS trial showed that 25 to 45 percent of the reduction for development of the microalbuminia can be reserved from the intensive glycemic treatment group. And there also the Kumamoto study showed that as a both primary and secondary prevention and nearly up to 62% reduction for development of the microalbuminuria by I intensively treatment the diabetic group. On the other hand, when we control the diabetes very strictly, but the, the using of the, this anti-diabetic drug can precipitate the renal damage or can be worsening the renal damage. So we have to take care on that. So for example, if GFR is less than 30, we should avoid the metformin. And, and this is long acting saponide also best avoided because of the hypoglycemic risk. And the riboglenide is safe in the kidney failure, but the glitazone and agabos are best avoided because of the retention of the fluid that can precipitate the kidney function. And among the DBB4 inhibitor, apart from the linagliptin, other DBB4 can be given with those adjustments. And the SGLT2 inhibitors, no doubt, we are not suitable in stage 3B DKT. Insulin is the best choice for the diabetic kidney disease, but a regular insulin and a rapid acting insulin analogs are preferred than the other long acting insulin. Another important thing is the blood pressure control. We should be targeted because of the, in diabetes, there is a comorbid with the blood pressure hypertension. So the target is the ADE recommended is less than 140 by 90 in the case of the early stage. If it is a protein urea is present, more tight control, 130-80, and the, can be cheap without significant side effect. In case of the isolated systolic hypertension, uh, for example, systolic blood pressure 180, more than 180, we should reduce uh, 20 millimeter mercury step by step to get an optimal blood pressure control. The use of uh, drugs is a uh, uh, choice. This is the RAS uh, blocking AC or ARB because it not only reduces the blood pressure but also the revert the microalbumin urea to the normal. This is a strong evidence a lot. But we have to consider that is there some condition we have to contraindicated to that this AC and ARB in case of a pregnancy, bilateral renal artery stenosis, hyperkalemia severe aortic stenosis and when the worsening of renal function is in. That is also the very important thing in the kidney disease control because of in case still, in, in, even in the abdomen excretion rate is normal, we should avoid the high protein intake, especially the animal sources. Once the abdomen excretion rate is raised, all the diabetic nephropathy is suspected we should reduce the protein intake to target of the 0.8 gram per kg, but not beyond below the 0.6 gram per kg body weight per day. What I mean is that because of we have there's a protein gap in that patient diabetic chronic kidney disease, but we have to replace on the, this protein gap, so not beyond to the 0.6 gram per kg, but that will be discussed by a later speaker. And also the in and hypertension restriction is a beneficial effect. And also we have to control our intake of the cholesterol, restricted intake of the saturated fatty acids and trans fatty acid, less than 10 parts of the total energy. The other avoidable conditions are nephrotoxic substance like NSAID, dehydration and smoking. Early and aggressive treatment of the UTN is a very important unit tract infection and some condition and it's, uh, it's an indicated sodium and phosphate restriction is beneficial effect. And using of the HMG CoA reductase inhibitor is beneficial in the lipid lowering therapy. And the most important thing is uh, whenever you treat the patient with DKD with diabetes kidney disease, there's a, if there is a hyperkalemia is persistent or a creatinine is a rising trend, where well, timely referral to the nephrology is a very important thing. So this is the last slide for my presentation. This, uh, in case of management of kidney failure, when the patient becomes turned out to be acidic GFR 30 mL per minute, we have to consider the renal replacement therapy for appropriate condition. If it's yes, uh, is, is there any suitable for renal transplant? We can follow in the, the, the right trend to make a renal transplant when the creatinine level is nearly 500 micromol per liter. Or is condition is not favorable condition, we can consider the CABD or hemodialysis also. 
all these conditions are impossible in some uh, condition that's not appropriate, we can choose a dietary and symptomatic treatment. So to be uh, concluded that uh, in all cases, uh, we can, the, our vision is that the war is free from the burden of the metabolic syndrome, um, especially in the renal failure. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is my reference, all the things, and thank you.